Beloved child of God, your heavenly Father created a perfect world with a perfect environment for perfection of life for mankind. As you know, his enemy used deception to seed doubt, which stole that perfection from Adam and Eve by their act of disobedience and through them for us as well. Your heavenly Father sent his own Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and walked in perfect obedience to the point of death on the cross, paying the debt for every sin to offer complete salvation and redemption, to bring abundant life, flourishing, healthy, joyful, purposeful life on this once perfect earth and to give eternal life when our physical life here is complete. When Jesus walked the earth, he was the mobile temple. The ark of Father's presence rested in his heart. And yes, even though he was the Son of God, he was also the Son of Man, which means he was tempted in every way as we are, and he was legal, And yet, he was without fault because of his love and obedience to the Father. Just like the Ark of the Covenant in days of old carried the presence of God so that nations were terrified of the ensuing judgment that erupted in its wake, while on the other hand, complete victory burst forth for Father's holy nation Israel everywhere they went. Just like that was Jesus. Jesus could touch lepers, the unhealable disease of the day, and be oblivious to contagion because of his obedient heart stance with the Father and his yielding to the Holy Spirit who rested on him. He was the mobile temple, the Ark of the Covenant, and filled with the glory of God. Not only was Jesus oblivious to contagion, but healing and wholeness power flowed from him to the lepers and all who were sick. He showed us what it looks like to live completely free of the law of sin and death and completely full of the law of spirit of life. This is the goodwill of your heavenly Father for you too. Jesus, who completely walked in your shoes, is now with your Heavenly Father interceding for your complete victory. And He left His own Spirit to be with you for the duration of your life on earth. It is the will of your Heavenly Father for you to be and to walk with Him just like Jesus and to be a mobile temple with the Ark of the Covenant in your heart overflowing with the glory of God. Listen with your spirit to these true stories. Over 1400 years ago, Columba was born in Ireland of royal ancestry. But just like Moses, he left all that royal prestige to follow Jesus. He set up a group of monasteries which were to run strictly as soldiers for Christ in the battle to win Ireland for Jesus. At Iona, his headquarters, Columba went for prayer in the forest one day, and there he viewed a host of very black demons armed with darts. The Holy Spirit revealed that the wicked host meant to enter his community and kill many of his men. Columba put on the Ephesians 6 armor of God and stood for most of the day, and it was a standoff until the angels of God came to his aid. Their presence routed the dark host. Columba returned to Iona and told his men that the deadly foes went to Ithacan land and attacked them with deadly disease and that many would die. The darts that those black hosts had brought were disease, and had Columba not seen it for the battle that it was, his community would have been decimated. However, Columba did make the Lord his refuge and the Most High his dwelling, 
and no evil or any plague came near his dwelling, which included himself, his home, and his area of dwelling, which was his community at Iona, exactly as scripture promises in Psalms 91. Two days later, Columba heard from the Holy Spirit that Bethany, the head of the Ithacan area monastery, had victoriously defended his community with fasting and prayer. In the face of this dark attack of sickness, disease, and plague, two men, Columba and Bethany, successfully defended two entire communities with only one person becoming ill and dying. Famous father of Bristol, of the orphans, and of faith, George Mueller also left family prestige in Germany to go on a faith adventure with Jesus to England. There, just establishing his life in Bristol with his devoted wife Mary and their little daughter in the womb, the cholera plague swept the city. The congregation George led was well aware that quarantine remained the pragmatic response. But as one man, they decided to defy conventional wisdom for spiritual wisdom mixed with faith. And that was meeting for prayer. Between 200 and 300 people met every morning for prayer. And George, unlike the response from the church in earlier times of the bubonic plague, attended homes of the sick to pray and read scripture and comfort people in the streets. The plague ended, and George and Mary welcomed healthy baby Lydia into the world, and only one person from their entire congregation became sick and died. Exactly as Jesus modeled, precisely as Columba walked, so did George Mueller, choosing to make the Lord his refuge and the Most High his dwelling. And no evil or any plague came near his dwelling which included himself and his home, exactly as scripture promises in Psalms 91. John G. Lake, famous missionary to South Africa, with a healing ministry based on faith, served in South Africa from 1908 to 1913. He'd grown up with a large family of 16 siblings, eight of whom died young. His own wife experienced instant healing And that is what he so desired and believed was the right way. He too left a life of earthly success to follow Jesus on this adventure. He prayed diligently and consecrated himself. And Jesus taught him to live in his spirit where all life and healing are. When the bubonic plague hit South Africa, John G. Lake and his small team kept ministering. One of the doctors asked, what was his secret to staying on the ground so long and burying the dead? John G. Lake answered the doctor that it was the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. He explained that as long as he kept his soul in contact with the Father, then the Holy Spirit flowed into his soul and body and no germ could attach to him because the Spirit of God would kill it. Lake offered to do an experiment where those very germs were placed on his hand and observed under a microscope, and it was verified by the doctor that the germs, instead of infecting Lake, died on his hand. John G. Lake's ministry led to the medically confirmed healing of more than 100,000 people through prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he too lived from the dwelling place in the Father as Psalms 91 speaks. He believed this was the way for every believer in Jesus, and so does your Heavenly Father. Beloved, let's turn now to our Heavenly Father to reconcile with Him through the complete and triumphant work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, blind the eyes of the enemy, deafen their ears, and hide us in the secret place. All lying and condemning tongues are commanded to be silent and removed. Holy Spirit, speak to the spirit of your beloved and quicken their ears to hear and heart to respond. Strengthen the heart of your beloved with grace, Father. Cover them with the holy blood of your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
your beloved comes before you with thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving for your mercy and grace and praise for your amazing loving kindness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Your beloved is approaching your throne of grace with confidence, Father, to receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, the coronavirus and ensuing sickness, disease, and plagues, and the fear of them are this time of need. Beloved, neither sickness nor plagues are Father's will for you, and in fact, He has given you complete deliverance from them through Jesus. And power, like Jesus had to completely repel sickness, but also to supernaturally heal it. So let's reconcile. Beloved, fallen human nature is operative in every human being on the planet. In that fallen human nature is a hidden power, and it's the power of sin. Yes, sin is a power. It's not a noun, an inanimate object. It is actually a power, a force that moves the fallen nature to engage in words, thoughts, and actions that are contrary to the nature of our Heavenly Father. For every sin, what happens is that a little more, or a lot more, death comes. Cells die. Oxygen doesn't flow. It's death by degrees. Father's ancient enemy tempts you to sin and then accuses you to the Father for breaking the law. And then, by that law, is empowered to put a death tax or sentence on you, which may be a sickness or plague, etc. If you have realized that you've sinned, just like everyone else on the planet, and believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and that He paid the debt for your sin, then you have received salvation. And if you haven't, then I encourage you to do so now. Your quality of life now and your eternal destiny rest on it. Here is the amazing good news. There has been a change in the law because there was a change in the priesthood. Jesus is priest in the order of Melchizedek. He is king of righteousness, king of peace, and priest of the Most High God, El Elyon. Because this is a change of priesthood, there is a change of the law. You are now no longer under the law of sin and death, but under the law of grace. Repentance is still necessary. And when you repent, the law of sin and death is weakened and as you continue in a state of repentance and relationship with your Heavenly Father, the law of sin and death is not allowed to operate. And as you yield, the spirit, the law of spirit of life, rather, is activated and strengthened in you in power. With the merciful and faithful high priest, Jesus Christ the Lord, you are guaranteed access to your Heavenly Father's throne of grace and are welcomed to draw near to his presence as the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ speaks on your behalf. There are so many magnificent provisions in this better covenant with the better promises on the better hope in Jesus, our faithful high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus, as the Son of God and the Son of Man, went to the cross and defeated all sin and death at the cross, and he defeated Father's ancient enemy who had the power of death. As Isaiah wrote in the 53rd chapter, Jesus stood in your place and bore the weight of all of your griefs, carried the heaviness of all of your sorrows, was pierced for every one of your transgressions, was bruised and crushed for every one of your iniquities, which are the inner crooked places that are in the fallen human nature and passed down generationally in the DNA. He was chastised to purchase your shalom, which is your restoration to wholeness. And then came the scourging. The cat of nine tails tore his body shredded his body 
Every tear, every drop of blood, paid for every sickness and every disease, which ever was or ever will be. The scourging paid for your healing and covered every weak place. As your faithful, merciful high priest in the order of Melchizedek, Jesus paid for these covenant benefits for you, and you can study them in Psalms 103. Beloved, every one of your iniquity is pardoned. Every one of your diseases is healed. Your life is redeemed from the pit, which includes but is not limited to the coronavirus. You are lifted up and crowned with loving kindness and compassion, and your years and your desires are filled with good things so that your youth is renewed. We bless the Lord for his graciousness and generosity. Our merciful and faithful high priest and our father bid you welcome to come to the throne of grace and confidence and repent for allowing sin known and unknown personal and generational to operate in your life and in your members which are the parts of your body including your heart hands feet mind tongue etc every word every thought and action personally and generationally that gave in to the pull of the fallen human nature that gave access to the power of sin including but not limited to fear and the dead work of religious requirements with its judgments and condemnation and bitter roots that worked to death and was empowered by the law, your beloved confesses, repents for, and renounces. Beloved, sickness and plagues come from, one, personal and generational sin, two, the fallen world that's under the law of sin and death with its subsequent curses, and three, hatred by the Father's ancient enemy. In fact, specific sins were chronicled under the Old Covenant that gave rise to plagues. The first is idolatry with immorality. In Numbers 25, 1-9, through 9, many Israelites attended Moab's idol worship festival, and they engaged in immorality there. The Father told Moses to tell the elders to put those to death. The law of sin and death was immediate. When one blatant offender entered the camp, parading around in front of those who were repenting, the faithful priest Phineas grabbed a spear and put both of those who were involved to death. The plague, which killed 24,000 people, was started by idolatry and immorality. It was stopped by immediate repentance and death. And the death under the law of grace that you engage in, beloved, is immediate repentance, putting to death fallen human nature. Number two, pride and rebellion against the governing authority that the father chose. In number 16, after Korah's rebellion, where father stepped in and supernaturally confirmed Aaron's priestly authority, he then supernaturally removed Korah and his followers in an unusual geographic event, and after that, a plague still broke out. Moses told his brother Aaron, the priest, to take the censer, put incense in it with burning coals from the fire in the altar, and hurry to the assembly to atone for them. It was an emergency spiritual mobile repentance and purification unit. The plague did stop as a result but 14,700 people died in it. The plague was started by pride and rebellion against Father's chosen priesthood and government, and it was stopped by the consecrated ones carrying the incense, which is intercession and worship, with burning coals from the altar, which is the supernatural fire of the holiness of God from the altar to the people. And in the third count, the plague was started by counting the soldiers. 2 Samuel 24 chronicles the discipline David received from the Heavenly Father because Father's ancient enemy incited David to sin by counting the military men. 
other nations counted their military men, but counting Israel's men was against Father's law. It was stopped by David following Gad's prophetic word to build an altar at the threshing floor of Aranya the Jebusite. The plague started by David yielding to a sinful temptation to pride as king by disobeying Father's orders. 70,000 people died in it. It was stopped by his obedience to build an altar in the place Father chose. An altar today is a holy, set-apart place of meeting. The first altar your Heavenly Father wants is your heart. The second altar He wants is a holy, set-apart place of meeting in your family, your home, a place in your home. Father, your beloved comes to you now and repents for, confesses, rejects and renounces every personal and generational idolatry and immorality. Every time that anyone or anything took the premium place of love and focus, your beloved repents. Every time that your beloved stood in pride and rebellion against the governing authority, both civil authority and your spiritual authority, your beloved repents. Your beloved repents for every yielding to the temptation from your ancient enemy to do something that the fallen human nature wants to gratify self and which disobeys you. Every other accusation that your ancient enemy has brought against your beloved, your beloved repents and asks your merciful forgiveness through the blood of the atonement, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Your beloved child is not under the law of sin and death, but is under the law of spirit of life through Jesus Christ our Lord and under the law of grace, which reign, reigns in the righteousness of high priest and King Jesus and which releases life to every cell in your beloved spirit, soul, and body. Now, every sickness and disease and plague and coronavirus and spirits of any kind, including but not limited to fear, that cause them to adhere to your beloved spirit, soul, and body are commanded to leave and are taken by force, if necessary, by your holy angel's father to the place that you assign them. Father, fill all of these places within your beloved with your Holy Spirit and seal them. Rejoice, beloved, because Colossians 2, 13 through 15 says, And when you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt, consisting of decrees against us in which were hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. He canceled every hostile decree written against you. He placed his perfect life of righteousness and peace over you, beloved. His life is in his blood, and his blood is speaking for you in the courts of heaven. Righteous judge of the universe, as your beloved is covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, with thanks and praise before your throne, would you cause the court to be seated and hear this case? Father, your beloved is repented for every known and unknown sin, and stands on your law, that where sin abounded, grace abounded all the more. Your beloved is no longer under the law of sin and death where sickness, disease, and plagues reign. Your beloved is under the law of spirit of life through the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who stands eternally before you in the order of Melchizedek. Righteous judge, dismiss this case against them and or shield them and their family against and or restore them and their family from sickness, disease, plague, and coronavirus wherever its source originates. Attorney, Lord Jesus Christ, please add or adjust before filing this with the court. Your beloved is asking for immediate reconciliation with relief and restoration and due restitution to life and health with all of its economic connections and advancements. Thank you for your swift judgment rendered in their favor in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, listen with your spirit and soak in faith to the word of God. Psalms 91. 
Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Let's stop here for a moment. The Most High is the name El Elyon, and El Elyon was first introduced by Melchizedek to Abram in Genesis 14. He was a priest of the Most High of El Elyon. He was king of righteousness and king of the city of peace. And in whose name he blessed Abram and he blessed the Most High. He stood as a priest between God and man. And Jesus is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And whoever is dwelling in the shelter of the Most High of El Elyon has no other gods before him. He stands there, she stands there with the Lord, pure of heart, in the presence of El Elyon. El Shaddai is the name that is Almighty. So you will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You will rest in the shadow of El Shaddai. And El Shaddai introduced himself to Abram in Genesis 17 and gave him the covenant of circumcision. And what he was doing there is saying that your heart and your intimacy is devoted to me, not to other gods. And as a result of our personal relationship, intimate relationship, I will bless you and your descendants, your seed. I will make you a father of nations and a, a company of nations will come from you. You will be blessed exceedingly and your descendants after you. So El Shaddai, the Almighty, had the power to do what he said he would do. And he has kept his covenant. You look at Israel. He's kept his covenant. You look at your life that you're even here listening. He's kept his covenant. You look at Jesus coming to the cross. He's kept his covenant. He has power to do what he promised he would do. And one of the word pictures with Shaddai has to do with mountains, with hills or mountains. And the invocation here is that El Shaddai has mighty power. He has the majesty of a king, and he is strong and unchangeable like the everlasting hills. So, beloved, you dwell in the shelter of El Elyon, who is the God of Jesus in the order of Melchizedek, and you rest in the shadow of of El Shaddai in the shadow of those hills, the shadow from the majestic hills of the Lord Mount Zion, the heavenly Mount Zion, overshadow you and you are safe. And you say, therefore, because he is well able to keep his word, that you, O oh God, are my refuge and my fortress, and I trust you. This is the God you can trust. And then... Surely this God you can trust is saving you from the fowler snare, that one that traps the birds. He is saving you from the traps and the snares of those who are very wily and skilled. He is saving you from the deadly pestilence. He is covering you with his feathers and under his wings you find refuge. His everlasting faithfulness is your shield and rampart. And these are military defense. <laughs> he, his faithfulness is your military defense. And you will not fear the terror of the night. You will not fear the arrow or the bullet that flies by day. Or the pestilence that stalks about in darkness. Or the plague that destroys at midday. Even though a thousand may fall at your side, as it surely did in ancient Israel, and as it has done in our day, and even though ten thousand may fall at your right hand, it will not come near you. 
you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make El Elyon the Most High your dwelling. And how do you make him your dwelling? Time, that your thoughts and your words and your actions are centered on him. And this does take time. And one way is listening to this recording. And another way is listening to the Bible or worship at, or blessings at night. Focusing at different parts through the day on him. Coming back, bringing your mind back to center. That's how you dwell in the Most High. Then no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, near your dwelling, just like Columba, just like George Mueller, just like John G. Lake, and just like you. It will not come near your dwelling because he is commanding his angels concerning you. So there is supernatural protection to guard you in all of your ways, and they will lift you up in their hands, and you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because my beloved loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him and her. I will protect them, for they acknowledge my name They will call upon me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. El Elyon, El Shaddai, your father, your high priest, are listening to you and keeping you safe and your family right now and every moment of every day. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ is flowing through your spirit, soul, and body and gracing and strengthening and putting to ease your nervous system, giving life to your complete personhood strengthening your heart in his grace by his spirit so christ is literally living in your heart through faith and you're rooted and established in the love of god the agape unconditional undeserved and unearned love of god for you your heavenly father's love for you you are rooted and established in it far and wide and high and deep so that you are filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Yielded and being filled with his spirit in every one of these places. He is nourishing your immune system with life even as he supernaturally shields your life with his own So, beloved, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this life will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This is sealed within you by the power of the Holy Spirit and rear guarded and sealed with his glory In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. This has been presented by Hope Streams, www.hopestreams.net.